In today's traditional education system, students in classroom are grouped by age or grade and then promoted to the next grade after a set amount of time. Students learn from their teachers and textbook and teachers decide what students should learn and when. And yes, don't forget about homework. Well, at least that's how I remember going through high school and college and got my master's degree. I'm sure most of you have done the same. Khan Lab School is founded on the belief that young people are capable of far more than society currently recognizes. Khan Lab School hopes to develop and test new types of learning experiences that can be shared with the world to help unlock human potential more generally. We have invited Dominic Lech Lechti to our studio. Dominic is executive director and president of the board at Khan Lab School. Dominic specializes in strategy and implementing, implementing technology-based solutions to complement the holistic student learning process. Dominic, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. <clears throat> so, Dominic, I know about uh, people, most of the people have gone through uh, a Khan Academy. That's an that's a online mm -hmm. uh, 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 portal where hundreds, if not thousands, but millions of uh, uh, parents and students uh, and teachers, uh, they go over there and uh, uh, get a very high quality mm -hmm. uh, online education. Khan Lab School is a physical space. What exactly the Khan, Khan Lab School is? It's not an online uh, portal, right? It's a, it's a physical space, it's a school. Uh, can you tell us more about what's your goal of, of what, what are the important missions of a Khan Lab School? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, you're right. It's a, it's a brick and mortar school and it was founded by, by Saul Khan, uh, who was also the founder of Khan Academy. And he was aiming kind of to, to challenge all the school, school artifacts out there because somehow it seems we're still stuck in the industrial age mm -hmm. um, and uh, with with, with those issues, what they were, they're having with the education system, which are focusing only on output like they did in the industrial age. Mm -hmm. uh, we, have a, we have the mission at Khan Lab School to develop fully empowered future citizen um, by pioneering model that put the, the learner at the center of its education experiences. Mm -hmm. So how Khan Lab School is different than traditional school? C can you share can you give us some examples how it's different and what are the major differences? <clears throat> yeah, we are. We have a, a fantastic uh, model. Um, mm -hmm. We call it uh, the learning design, actually, mm -hmm. where uh, we have the student in the center because we're thinking the student is, and um, we're believing into it, that the student is shifting from being a consumer to a creator. Mm -hmm. Around that, we have the four A's. Uh, we have the first A, it's the approach to learning, which talks about how we approach the mastery uh, learning, based learning. And then the, the, um, the second A is the <coughs> architecture of learning, where he talks about the structure of our learning at our school. And I will go into that a little bit more deeper, all those A's. Then the fourth, the third A talks about the academic character outcomes. If a student leaves our school, how um, he or she looks like. Then at the, the fourth, the last one is the art of teaching because mm -hmm. Uh, they rarely model that talking about the teacher. We think the teacher is really important to focus on in that particular model. Also, mm -hmm. the leadership is really important to, right. to disrupt and to challenge as well because the role of the teacher is really changing right. um, as well there. So going back to kind of the approach to learnings, we have there um, three different levels we'll be focusing on at our, at our school, not only on a content level, which is the first C, mm -hmm. but also on a contextual level, uh, which means about application. And then the last level is kind of the conceptual level so let me go in. So our students, um, when they're working on their content, mm -hmm. they're leveraging a lot of like technology, which accelerates their, their learning process. Mm -hmm. But it only complements because the human touch is still needed with the teacher. So they're still meeting the teacher, but less what they're doing in public schools. Mm -hmm. In public schools, they may meet them, say a math teacher, seven to eight hours, right? Mm -hmm. in, in our school, they're meeting them only for like two hours, and the rest are working on their self-paced learning tag. Right. So it could actually be that the second grader is already like in sixth grade math. Right, so so that's um, a great thing to see. And what they're also doing on a content level, so they're meeting once a week with the lead advisor, and the lead advisor is actually kind of like, if I would talk in traditional terms, is actually the homeroom teacher, mm -hmm. which um, takes care about each student and checks in what kind of goal he or she is achieving. Mm -hmm. It's kind of the accountability piece after a, after a week, right? And the student is actually responsible to. To, to, to set his own goals mm -hmm. based on like a seven-week schedule and he um, 
has it on his weekly schedule mm -hmm. and he says, oh, here I'm doing math, here I'm doing science, and here that's what I want to achieve. And then after a week, they have to sit down with the lead advice, actually, uh, what I have accomplished in reflecting on all right. these goals. Now, that's kind of the, the first day, the, the, the approach to learning. And, and, and the content, uh, so the second part is then in the afternoon, they're applying it in, in various projects. So mm -hmm. it's, it's, that's a major difference because usually you memorize the content mm -hmm. and it's not meaningful to you yeah. at all. So you have to apply it to different contexts. Right. So mm -hmm. there's a the whole afternoon, our students working on projects. Mm -hmm. And then they're connecting it to also to concept, to big ideas. Mm -hmm. When I was at school, I was memorizing like um, Africa, the 40 whatever states they have. I remember today one state, it's Egypt, because I was on vacation right. there. If I would have learned about, say, the tribes, say, right. the culture, identity, etc. Um, I would have connected that to a well that I would have developed in Africa, right? right? <clears throat> then I could have talked like in, say, about the well, say, a business plan to develop a business plan in math about the mechanics, mm -hmm. geometry, etc. So it could connect everything what I've learned. And that's kind of our approach to learning there. And then also in the assessment piece after seven weeks, those students have to pre present their project in front of an audience mm -hmm. that they may know or not know. The last time it was a panelist that they didn't know, mm -hmm. and we could ask questions. Uh, and so we challenged them quite quite a bit in those approaches. So, sounds like your school is, Khan Lab school is hands-on, you know? I mean, it's not that you are teachers or traditional, in traditional school where you are going to go through a, a level of grades and then teacher decides uh, that where the student is, right? So, it, how do you keep track of Students, let's say uh, a, a child is at kindergarten, mm -hmm. um, and I mean, pretty much sure you don't have kindergarten, but let's say five years old child right. enter into your program, and then a child say, okay, I only likes to do uh, 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 painting. I don't want to do math or science. Mm -hmm. All I, all I want to do is uh, math, uh, uh, just painting. So how do you? So how does it work out? So mm -hmm. do you let students decide, or do you have some kind of structure, uh, 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 a schedule that okay, I, I know that he would like to do painting, but there are, because child does not know, uh, 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 because they don't know all the math and science, till, the, till you expose them, right? Uh, they don't, just don't know whether they love it or hate it, right? Absolutely. So how do, you, yeah. how do you engage child into your program? This is actually our second aid, it's the architecture of learning, what we're having then. Uh, we still have like a, a full comprehensive curriculum in place where okay. we know exactly where our students are, right? And, and, and the, the architecture of learning also ta not talks about grade levels. We don't have any grade levels. Yeah. Um, we're having independence levels. So in all traditional language, you would say kindergarten, that's our le I level one, we call it mm -hmm. IL level one, mm -hmm. independence level one. And how we are, we are making this decision based on the rubric, based on criteria, based on motivation, focus, collaboration, how well you're managing your time, mm -hmm. um, how well you give feedback. So that's how we're um, putting our students in those independence levels. Yeah. So, so that could be so we have now a seventh grader who could be ready for our high school that we're opening in 17, 18, right? Mm -hmm. It could be uh, because he's ready and he, he doesn't need any more guidance. Right? Right. And the same is in curriculum, right? So because we have this lead advisor who meets the student on a weekly basis, we can make sure mm -hmm. that those objectives are met that we have in our scope and sequence document, right? right? But the difference is they're not doing everyone at the same time the same thing. Everyone is on a different learning track here. So, and then it's interest-based because the student can say, oh, I want to do it tomorrow and he is in or she is in charge of his own planning right. takes responsibility and these are actually the key pieces of our thing is like ownership and relationship so we give them ownership so they have ownership time right a lot of time but they can work on their own and and then we're building relationship with them in our discussion and also amongst their students with the mixed age learning mm -hmm. approaches so because they learn from each other okay so you have um lower school and upper school. Tell us uh, what's the difference. So our lower school, that's the old traditional name what we would use. It's our IL-1 to IL-4, independence level 1 to independence <coughs> level 4, which, mm -hmm. which has all this criteria what I have just explained before. This is kind of uh, our elementary, right? <coughs> And then we have the middle <coughs> part, which we call IL-5, uh, which has just uh, more criteria. So the criteria of independence are more rigorous, so they need less guidance. And also we give them more goal time. The goal time <coughs> is where the students are working on their own goals, which they have achieved, say, in, in, in elementary, <coughs> about 20%. And then in middle school, we give them 25% of goal time. And then in high school, our IL-6 and IL-7, they will get about 30 to 50% of the time they have on their own what they can learn. Um, okay. Dominic, we have some interesting video from your Khan Lab school. Yes. Let's just show to our viewers. Absolutely. I really like how it's independent and 
and self-paced. So if I wanted, I could move ahead in math or science or whatever I wanted to learn. And we could learn things that we are interested in learning and not just things that the teachers want us to learn. It's cool to see how, no matter your age, all the kids at all different ages can be wherever they want to be learning so that they can be like three years ahead of their grade. I don't have to work at the third grade level everybody else is working at. I can go above and beyond what all my old school teachers would have expected from me or anybody else. I love helping the little kids, like it's so much fun. And I have friends of all different ages. And actually a lot of the times, the younger kids will teach us stuff instead of like swear for stuff. So that's like also something really nice about having a mixed age learning. Everyone can be a teacher and everyone can learn from each other and not only the teacher can teach so that people have a chance to like teach people how to do things and sort of be the leader. And what it does is it creates a prism and you'll see later but it reflects the light from the four images that we have over here. It's like the teachers are part of the community and they're just advisors, more like coaches rather than teachers. Minus 1.5. Now 0 0.8 minus 0 0.26. Or minus 0 0.8. I think students here are really self-motivated because nobody's telling them what to do. And when people tell you what to do, you don't want to do it. So now that they have the power, they empower themselves to learn more. And everybody is just so friendly and um, very creative, independent, and smart. Um, and I think with all of these people around, it helps build uh, everybody up. One of the things I'm looking forward to this year is meeting some new kids and um, learning a little bit more than I did last year, and just inviting some other kids to be part of this educational revolution. Dominic, thanks for um, stopping by to our studio and uh, to our viewers. Thanks for watching ST uh, World Affairs. If you have any questions, if you have any interesting story to, stories to share with us, feel free to contact us through uh, social media. Uh, till we see you next time, see you, um, see you later. Thank you.